for the next 30 minutes, we're going to talk about innovation tools for asset management strategies. And I'd like to introduce you to our first guest. Our first speaker will talk about new approaches when deciding on the maintenance of specific segments of a sewer. See, he compares a book value management to the new approach, the net asset value management. And I warmly welcome the managing director at Stein Infrastructure Management GmbH, Dr. Robert Stein is with us. And I hope he can hear me well. Robert Stein. Yes, uh, I do. So, um, can you hear me and see the slide? But I don't see you, unfortunately, not yet. Nevertheless, that's going to be fixed in a second. Yeah. And I think the audio is just getting mm. fixed as well. So, yeah, uh, thank you for um, the introduction. Welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, um, title uh, of my present. Robert Stein is already online and if he can hear me well. Yeah. Shall I uh, start? Hello? Can you hear me? Yeah, you can start, Robert. I got the information backstage. The presentation is online, so the digital stage is all yours. Okay, thank you. Yeah, welcome, uh, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, my presentation, Innovative Tools for Asset Management uh, Strategies. Yeah, asset management, as we understand it, is a management about, uh, yeah, or is all about understanding the we and aging processes of engineering structures and to combine this uh, with the uh, financial figures. In, in that regard, we see um, that a paradigm shift became essential and necessary so that we not anymore focus uh, on the book value, which is uh, for us uh, um, more a theoretic uh, um, uh, size or figure because it's, uh, um, uh, um, the uh, depreciation period is quite often chosen based on theoretical or political parameters. Yes, uh, uh, the book value is relevant for fee calculation, but uh, uh, from our perspective, not suitable for investment planning uh, for the structural maintenance or the rehabilitation of uh, engineering objects. So um, what is the alternative? Um, what is the alternative? For us, it's the net asset uh, value management. Uh, and the net asset value represents for us the material value of an asset, a sewer or a sewer section, taking into account all uh, um, defects within the system, for example, detected uh, via CCTV inspection. And uh, with the help of an aging model, we are then able to predict uh, um, the pattern or the aging of this process until, for example, this net asset value reach an end so that uh, it's uh, up to replacement or at least renovation. So, uh, and uh, this net asset value is uh, from our perspective suitable for investment planning uh, because it's not connected to a theoretical size, it's connected to the real uh, uh, asset uh, erosion of an object. So uh, we, uh, also work with the condition class, which is internationally known, and uh, the condition class is based on the most severe single defect of an object and de defines the rehabilitation uh, priority. And the picture for this is uh, the stopwatch and um, the fabric deterioration class, which helps us or enables us to develop this net asset value is a criterion for the remaining service level. And it considers uh, the distribution, extent, and degree of all the defects within an object. And the picture for that is the, the hourglass. And uh, we, uh, we use a condition class in, in standard classes here in Germany. We have from zero to five. And the same we do uh, uh, with the fabric deterioration class, or we adjust it to international uh, evaluation schemes. Yeah. So the picture is the hourglass, and uh, with that, with this knowledge, um, we we uh, know is it really still relevant to repair, or is 
uh, enough of the resources um, of the system already gone that just a renovation or replacement is uh, uh, sufficient. So the tools we have to apply, it's all about right investment at the right time for each individual pipe section based on the fabric deterioration model and individual action plans. And um, these models include concepts like life cycle management or benefit risk management or performance optimization, asset-based investments and de deterioration risk-based investments. And um, these approaches are all uh, linked to the ISO 55000 standard asset management and organization, but in detail, it consists of uh, five elements. And the first one, and maybe even the most important one, is the uh, data analytics. Because here we have to assure that the data we include in our system are consistent, are correct, are plausible, are, are valid, and that we uh, uh, bridge the gap between old data which have a certain kind of uh, older classification scheme to the new data with, with up-to-date classification schemes. The next step would be then um, the structural object assessment here, including the condition uh, assessment of an object and the fabric deterioration class assessment. The next step is then uh, application of the aging model to predict uh, condition and fabric deterioration class of an object level, combined with a cost model, which includes the uh, fi uh, financial uh, situation of the client, the, the uh, individual cost structure. And then we have everything together to put it in our strategy model to find, uh, yeah, for uh, certain selected objectives, uh, the most efficient way. And last but not least, uh, um, when we have such a strategy, an optimized one, which uh, has to be implemented, the next step is to monitor this on a yearly basis so that we can assure to achieve these objectives on the long run. And here now, uh, um, uh, some, some results of such an analysis. We see a network with around uh, 500 kilometer total network lengths on the uh, um, uh, uh, row, um, first row, we see the results of the so-called carry-on strategy. So that is a strategy which is already implemented by the network owner. And below, in the second row, we see the results of the optimized strategy. The uh, first uh, diagram shows the development of cost. So this network owner invests on a yearly base around 3.5 million euros, mainly uh, for replacement. And um, uh, it's, uh, the network already has a, a fabric deterioration class. It means an asset erosion where, where 11% of the uh, sewer sections have a very severe fabric deterioration, or in other words, are, are doomed for replacement. Um, the, when they continue with this budget and strategy, this will increase to 38% and um, with the priorities, the condition class, the dark blue shows the imminent need for action. It increases to 45. Now, uh, with the optimized strategies, we see that the uh, network owner nearly doubles the budgets, still has a, a strong focus on replacement, but uh, um, because with this increase in budget, all we also renovation and repair increases. And um, with this, he is able to reduce um, um, the uh, uh, a fabric deterioration class, a uh, um, very critical deterioration class on the long run, and also has a perspective to reduce the uh, most severe and critical defects within the system on the long run. So this sounds uh, or looks quite good. The, the, here is a picture, uh, for example, on the right side, we see uh, some consequences of this action the re based on the rehabilitation backlog. With the carry-on strategy, the rehabilitation backlog shows all the measures, rehabilitation measures, which needed to be done, but because of lack of resources, financial-wise, uh, resources-wise, couldn't be do, couldn't be done, and we see that the risk increases to nearly 300 million euros over a period of uh, 50 years without risk premium, and if I would include now a cost risk factor of two then are already the risk involved in the system 
would be over such a period 600 million euro and the cost risk factor of three, which is just moderate, would accumulate the risk to nearly 900 million euros for a network of just a total length of 500 kilometer. Where we see uh, optimized strategy, we see um, that after a period of 25 years, we have see a significant reduction in the rehabilitation backlog. So the, uh, we can uh, be optimistic that such a strategy comes true. Now to finalize this, just a, a brief view to the cost. We see here a diagram in red, the development of the network with no intervention. That means zero investment. And over a period of 30 years, it means that uh, when I don't invest, I have nevertheless an asset erosion and it accumulates to nearly 136 million euros over a period of 30 years. If the network owner just continues, it's about third, minus 30 million euros. And with the optimized strategy, it's at up to plus 141 million. But is this um, uh, an effective figure? This we see when we compare the results. Um, so uh, here we see the comparison of the zero strategy, no investment, carry on and optimize strategy. And we see here the minus 136 million. It's the delta between the asset value uh, at the start of the uh, project and um, at the end after 30 years. So um, with the carry on the minus uh, 13 and with the optimize the plus 141 million euros. If we subtract now the rehabilitation cost, then the um, zero strategy is still the, um, the least efficient uh, because I still have here the minus 136 million with the carry on strategy, the minus is 110 million and with the optimize the minus is 45 million. So it's a delta between carry on and optimized of 65 million um, uh, where I'm better. But in, in Europe, um, for example, our uh, networks have a fee structure. So I have also an income. And when I account or uh, um, uh, um, also add the income, which I earn with my network, then we call it the net asset value balance in total, we see Doing nothing is a minus uh, of 95 million. The carry on strategy is 56 million and the optimized strategy is plus 260 million. So in um, this uh, uh, interesting and fascinating figures and uh, another interesting figure is we call it the net asset value profit also a new financial figure. It's simple. I have the net asset value of the optimized strategy after 30 years minus the net asset value I would have achieved with the carry on strategy minus all the cost. So this uh, gives a delta of 33 million. So I at least have a profit with this new form of action plan of around 1.1 million euros per year. And the overall balance, and this is already my last slide, we see now that, yeah, Although I have an increase in the rehabilitation cost of 92% with such an optimized strategy based on, on the fabric decoration class and the net asset value is of, of uh, 360%. So the question at the end for network owners is, do I just invest my 90 million, uh, 97 million euros and uh, achieve with that an asset value loss of minus 30 million euros or do I uh, uh, achieve with an increase of 89 million invest and uh, asset value increase of 141 million euros. With that, we can, um, with this optimization of investment, we can uh, significant increase the resilience of our network infrastructure. And so we see that the consideration of the net asset value based on a fabric deterioration class um, uh, allows us a, complete, yeah, a, a full paradigm shift in asset management uh, for the future. And, and with that, we are capable to achieve the necessary investment in our networks also from a political level, because now uh, everyone understands that the benefit um, uh, which a, a good investment provides uh, for the municipality. Yeah, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you so much, Dr. Dr. Robert Stein. Thank you.
for your presentation. And we are heading over to Dr. Agnes Janda, Department Head for Sewer Infrastructure at Gelsenwasser AG. And we are very excited to hear also from you how regulation has to support the technical progress. Yeah, so um, ladies and gentlemen, also welcome uh, from my person. So I will start my presentation. Please give me a sign if you... I don't have it yet, but yeah, yeah now I have the first slide, I guess. Yeah, Thank okay. You. Nicht im Präsentationsmodus, nur im, 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 im Ansichtsmodus. Yeah, that's all right. Um, yes, better? Yep. Yeah. Okay, so, Thank you so much. Um, <laughs> um, I will uh, have some words about how regulation has to support technical prog progress. Um, yes, it's the um, like technical progress, like um, uh, Dr. Stein. Um, uh, showed us in, in his presentation. So um, the first chart, you, you see, um, I uh, call it duties of a city drainage. Um, so you have a look that the wastewater sector is uh, comprehensively regulated in, in Germany. And this picture shows an example of uh, the legal obligations of the network operators. And you can see they range from commercial and legal tasks to uh, maintenance planning, construction and operation. And um, at uh, various legal levels, levels so it's uh, federal law and state law, um, municipal drainage systems are required to act uh, either operationally as um, in the cleaning or inspection of sewers or conceptionally because um, the structural and the hydraulic measures in the sewer must be planned and submitted to the authorities and uh, later also in the constructional in implementation. So um, I think you can get the impression that uh, regulation in Germany is very well suited to optimal position to optimally position the wastewater sector and uh, in particular to ensure that uh, maintenance and renewal uh, of technical facilities. Um, so, uh, yes, we have a high density of regulation in, in the German wastewater market, but regardless of the size of the municipal drainage system. So that means um, that whether I am uh, responsible for 100 kilometers or for 1000 kilometers of the network, um, I am subject to the same regulations. And uh, I think it's not difficult to, to understand that the setting and um, therefore the access to know-how is quite different uh, for 100 kilometer units or 1000 kilometer network units. And so um, I can hardly expect the same qualitative, qualitative uh, results. Um, I also have to choose the level of my regulatory standards accordingly if uh, everyone is to achieve it. Um, so we are convinced that technical standards and management standards are continuously, continuously uh, evolving in Germany. Um, but I think uh, the question is who benef benefits uh, from this? Um, who is applying it? Um, and how big is the part of the industry that continues to develop in a style that, that uh, Robert Stein um, presented to us? Um, I think because one thing is, is obvious, um, further development is not incorporated into the regulatory mechanism in all sub-disciplines. Um, the speed of adjustment of regulation compared to the speed of scientific uh, further development is slow. Um, and digitalization and modern controlling instruments do not play a role in the dialogue between urban drainage and uh, regulatory authorities. And in the area of structural rehabilitation, um, the regulatory side today still focus on the condi uh, condition uh, class on the most single individual damage. Um, the fabric uh, deterioration class as described by Robert Stein plays no role at all. 
Um, and so my uh, hypothesis is uh, today's regulation does not generate optimal investment strategies. So how do we achieve a solution? Um, we have to realize the relevance of wastewater as an asset for municipalities. It is one of the largest asset building blocks of a city. Uh, this means that an intelligent uh, rehabilitation strategy has a very strong influence on the economic stability of a city. Um, in addition, the wastewater division plays a central role in the integral rehabilitation planning of all piped media in a city. Uh, so when you have a look on the on the uh, um, chart, the sievers are often located in the middle of the street at a very great depth, and so they generate the greatest cost in rehabilitation. However, the wastewater sector is also responsible for the issue, issue of stormwater and damage pre-surface runoff. This means there is um, extremely great potential in this division for the redesign of public areas. This means we need most modern approaches we can get for this rehabilitation planning. So what needs to be happen? Um, we need more dialogue between operators and regulators. Regulators should promote new methods and break free from overly tight regulatory causes. It must be also possible to apply different approaches depending on the size of the company or the size of the city. Um, of course, uh, corporate staff must be properly trained and empowered to develop an understanding of these new methods of rehabilitation planning. Um, it's also something that regulators should be working on, not just looking at whether the right evidence for metric is being provided. Um, this is moving more in the direction of qualitative rather than quantitative regulation. We can also use data and projects collected so far to successfully prove that investment planning based on uh, substance brings real benefits, as Robert Stein also shows up. So thank you. Thank you to Dr. Agnes Yanda. Thank you so much for your insights. And ladies and gentlemen from the big audience, please also, of course, write your questions into the chat. We are very happy now to collect your questions. And I see already some questions are coming in. Uh, one is going directly to Mr. Stein. So this is now opening up our Q&A session before we head over to the main stage in a few moments. Uh, are you working with cities outside Germany too, Mr. Stein? Could you give us an insight on that? Um, uh, no, uh, not yet. We have in, in Germany the luxury situation that CCTV inspection is uh, since now uh, more than 20 years mandatory and uh, many of the municipalities have already done the second generation of CCTV inspection so the data um, availability is, is extremely high and um, so um, this facilitates here the implementation of such a system and quite often is on the other hand, uh, when we talk with other cities abroad, um, that they have to admit that they have a lack in, in data and with that uh, um, don't see the right point to start with. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for your insights. Um, coming to Ms. Yanda, what would have to be the first steps to noticeably improve regulation in the wastewater sector? What would you say? You already mentioned some of them, but maybe give us more insights on that. Yeah, I think um, there will be these three points. Maybe the first, um, I think the quality of, of the data must be significantly improved. And um, on the second, the network operators, they must demonstrate the know-how with which they work. In, in other words, I would say uh, whether and how they have trained their own employees or whether they work with, with service providers. And uh, maybe the, the third point will be uh, we need modern monitor monitoring and controlling instruments um, that enable us to track uh, development and um, in the presentation Robert Stein shows to us 
uh, we see such a modern uh, controlling and monitoring instrument. Uh, this has to be used from the um, from the authorities, I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Um, just to my colleagues backstage, I can't hear you in my in-ear, but from the timing, we have to head back to the main stage. So I just have one more question to Mr. Stein, and then I assume we go back. That's the program I would go for, but please let me know somehow my in-ear is not working, if that's the way to go. Mr. Stein, last question to you. Is this research based on Germany, or is it easily copied to other countries? Uh, it's easily copied to, to other countries because... Um, uh, each of these models is individual uh, adapted uh, to, to a specific uh, city. So, and this adaptation process has to be done everywhere. Uh, even if I train, uh, work for a larger or a smaller German city, I have to do it as I have to uh, be done for, for other cities. So it's, it's not a, a standard process, it's a, a calibration process, which has to be taking place to adapt this such a system or framework to the individual needs and patterns of a specific city. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Mr. Stein.